What's up everyone and thanks for joining me again this week. This video is going to be a continuation of my series for performance tuning where you can only rewrite the query right where you can't add indexes and things like that. And the query we're going to be looking at today is a correlated subquery. We're going to look at a couple different ways of rewriting this, so be sure to stick around till the end to kind of see the best solution. So anyway, we have this badges table and we're trying to identify the first date that every user received a badge. And in particular, we're using a correlated subquery to figure that out. What a correlated subquery is, is it's a, it's a subquery, right? So it's usually nested in some part of your regular SQL query, but there's some kind of join where the information within that subquery is being related to the columns of data outside of that subquery. So in this specific example, we're correlating the user ID from within our subquery to the badges table outside of our subquery. So this query is pretty straightforward. For every user ID in our badges table, we're gonna execute this correlated subquery to just go retrieve the minimum date for that user ID. So let's examine what this query is doing by looking at its execution plan. I want to start by looking at this index scan on the badges table, uh, which is reading in all the data from the badges table. This makes sense because we're not filtering that data, there's no where clause or anything like that, so there's no real way around having to read in all that data you know, at some point in the plan. So that's what this index scan is doing. Now the interesting aspect of the correlated subquery is for every row in our badges table that's getting read in, as part of this hash match join, we need to go and retrieve uh, the matching row with the minimum date that's part of our correlated subquery once again from the badges table. You can kind of see that we're reading from this badges table twice. Once inside our correlated subquery, we're taking our 8 million rows. It's getting reduced down to only about a million rows because we're choosing the minimum date for each user ID and each user ID can of course have multiple badges. So that's why we get a reduction of rows. But when we join that back to our original badges table, our hash match join operator is left uh, outputting those 8 million original rows. So we're not really filtering down our data in any way. And so the final few operators of this execution plan are just deduping our data, right? We have another hash match aggregator, which is taking those 8 million records and getting rid of the, the, the duplicates on user ID and that minimum date uh, to return the million rows that our query asked for. And so that's our correlated subquery in a nutshell. Uh, I want to just make a point of taking a look at the time and IO statistics for that query uh, because it'll be an interesting comparison for when we rewrite it. And so we'll see here that the number of pages that SQL Server has to read is about 43,000, which is our whole badges table, and that this takes about three and a half seconds to execute. And you know, I ran this numerous amounts of times and it's, it's consistently that. So if we want to try to improve the performance of this query, one thing we could try doing is turning this correlated subquery into a derived table query. What that means is we get rid of that relationship between the inner and the outer queries and instead take our subquery, put it into a derived table and define the relationship there. This may not seem like a big change since we're just moving our subquery from our select statement to our from statement, uh, but it does have an impact on the execution plan in this case. If we take a look at our execution plan, you'll see that the layout is somewhat different. Both the left and the right streams that are heading into our join uh, are now reducing the data, right? The first stream is taking all 8 million rows in our badges table and doing that min date function uh, so it only returns a million rows as it goes into the hash match join. And then the second stream we're dealing with also dedupes the data just based on user ID, once again reducing it to those million rows before it goes into that hash match join to, to actually do the join. What this means is if you compare that to the first query, which was joining 1 million records with 8 million records, this query only needs to join 1 million records with 1 million records. It's significantly less work that SQL Server has to do. And you'll see that that is the end of our query basically, right? Our hash match join just outputs the 1 million records and that's our final data set. There's no more deduping that has to be done. All the deduping was done right up front, right after we read in the data from our badges tables. Uh, it was deduped, then joined, and then output. And so if we go look at our statistics IO and time again, we'll notice that the number of reads for these queries hasn't changed, right? We're still reading the whole badges table. There's, there's no kind of optimization we could do there uh, by rewriting this correlated subquery to a derived table query. But 
because we are joining 7 million less rows, you can see the CPU time, right, is 33% faster. Right? In this case, it's running in two and a half seconds, roughly, instead of three and a half seconds of that previous query. And once again, I've, I've ran this multiple times and it's, it's consistently, right, 33% faster. So in this scenario, right, this second query performs better, not because it's reading less data, but it's able to filter it down sooner so that when it gets to that join step, that hash match join, there's less rows of data that SQL Server actually has to join together. And that's where we're seeing that performance improvement. That's why our number of logical page reads doesn't change at all, but the amount of time that SQL Server had this query running on the CPU did decrease. And there's one last solution I want to show you, but before we get to that, I just want to mention that not every correlated subquery is going to perform uh, poorly compared to the derived table version of the query. In this case it did, but the SQL Server Optimizer is pretty smart and in a lot of scenarios it's going to write the execution plans for both types of queries in exactly the same way. You can write your query using a correlated subquery or you can use it using this derived table syntax and the optimizer is going to generate the same exact execution plan. But sometimes it doesn't and that's where it's important to kind of be aware of, hey, I can rewrite this query a different way to hopefully get the execution plan to change a little bit to improve performance. All right, and I wanna go over this final solution here. Uh, this is just kind of a, a, a little bonus because some of you may have noticed that these queries that I wrote are overly complicated, right? We could just go ahead and write this as a plain group by statement with just a minimum date in our select, no subqueries anywhere at all. It'll give us the same results and the performance will be super fast because there's no joining involved. SQL Server's just gonna use a hash match operator to kind of dedupe that data, get the mins and output our results. This is by far the fastest way of writing this query without any subqueries at all. And while in these demo queries, it really doesn't make sense to use a correlated subquery or a derived table when we could write a query in this very simple manner, um, I, I, I kept this as the last solution because you're not always gonna be able to do that, right? In the real world, your queries, they're not gonna be these simple demo queries. They're gonna have more columns, more tables, different join interactions, different where filters. So it's important to just realize the, the larger pattern that correlated subqueries can give poorer performance than if you just took that subquery and put it in a derived table. If you're able to, you're not going to be able to do it for every single type of correlated subquery. And that's it for this week's episode. Thank you for watching. Hopefully now you have a new technique in your SQL Server bag of tricks that you can use next time you need to performance tune a query. If you're not a subscriber yet, be sure to press that subscribe button so you don't miss any of the other videos in this series about rewriting queries in order to improve performance. And with that, I'll see you next time.